Alex Brundle here. I'm often asked to do a track guide of the Goodwood Motor Circuit layout, which is the one used for the Goodwood Revival and the Goodwood members meeting, so here it is. These laps are taken from this year, 2023 Goodwood members meeting, where we're lucky enough to lead the race in a Lotus Cortina, so they should be decent laps to find our way around. <laughs> The first corner is called Magwick and there are several important points to remember. Firstly, not get sucked in and make sure you're right on the left hand side of the racetrack using all of the road on the way in. Secondly, it's to not drive directly in towards that first apex which we don't need. There are two marshals posts on the outside of the circuit and you can drive directly between them to give yourself the best line in which will leave you not too wide but also not too tight in the middle of the corner. So you brake quite late, but not too hard for Magwick. Important to remember not to brake too hard as it gives you a bit too much oversteer on the way in and you arrive here, which is in the middle of the road in the mid corner, which is when we can use the car dynamics to help us. As we bleed out of the brakes and push the throttle in, most cars will move from having a little bit of understeer to a little bit of oversteer, which is exactly the car dynamic change we want in the middle of Magwick. And that looks a bit like this. So Ford's Water's next up and it's the main high speed challenge of the track. The main thing here is not to turn in too early so you have to give yourself just a moment after the turn in board before you commit the car and that's because all the grip is early in this corner. As soon as you clear the apex the circuit falls away towards the exit which generates more and more of a challenge and it's slightly off camber. So you've got to get the car rotated quite early in the corner which means a late turn in and you should really have most of the work done by the time you clear the apex to give yourself safety through the exit. Another one of the corners at Goodwood just like Magic where the temptation is to break too hard and also drive directly into the apex so I always force myself to go left into the no-name right-hander and force myself not to brake too hard. The harder you brake, the more weight transfer you get and the more oversteer you'll get through the mid-corner, uh, which means you'll have to, have to catch it and not be able to point the car to the right-hand side for St. Mary's. It also helps here if you can take the downshift slightly late if you're going to downshift the car, which will prevent any kind of rear locking. It's one of the few corners around Goodwood where there's nowhere to go directly after the corner apart from straight into St. Mary's. So the game of the corner, if you like, is to take the maximum speed from the point where you break through the apex, meaning that getting on the throttle is really not a concern if you want to do that even at all before you arrive at St. Mary's. You should really be going in with so much speed you can't get back fully to the throttle before you need to break again for the left-hander of St. Mary's. So as always in racing we bias the slowest part of any complex because we spend the most time in it and therefore there's the most time to be gained or lost in it. There's also an unseen bump just before the apex of St Mary's we need to prepare the car for. So both of those things mean we need to be right over here on the right hand side before heading into St Mary's to give ourselves the best possible chance. There's loads of time in here. As you crest the bump with each end of the car, it's extremely likely you'll have some kind of balance issue in St. Mary's, which is another reason to get the turning done early and get the car straight through the exit. It is really important to take apex speed here, but it is also really important to get on the power because the run down to Lavent is deceptively long and also slightly uphill in eventual terms. So you need to get yourself here, up against the left hand curb, so you can get the power in as hard and early as possible after you've crested that nasty bump. So 
So positioning for this right can be pretty tricky and involves thinking about the right as really you're exiting the corner previous, even though they're quite a decent distance away. If we rewind back, we find that as soon as we finish catching the car from St. Mary's, we realistically have to start adjusting our line and aiming across towards the marker boards here in quite an unnatural square line so that we can drive straight into the uh, the braking zone for Lavin, which will allow us to brake much later than if we're braking across the road and, and save us loads of time. So this is really one of the most important moments of the lap, which is picking up the throttle in Lavin. Um, you tend to use the weight transfer that you will generate by braking, holding a little bit of brakes on to turn the front of the car in. And then there is a non-negotiable moment where you have to commit to the throttle, otherwise you lose so much time through the exit. The main peril of this corner is that outside curb. The corner opens towards you, it's tempting to get earlier and earlier and earlier on the throttle to try to take the speed, but if you touch that outside curb, it really pulls you wide and as the corner continues to tighten, you just won't make it. Got to try and find the balance between a straight line for the braking in Woodcut and using all of the track when you get to the point of turning. You can see this Marshall's post on the left hand side, that's perhaps a little bit too wide. The grandstand on the right hand side, perhaps a little bit too direct. We're looking about in the middle of the two to try to give us a nice open turn in, but also to be able to commit to the braking nice and late. Much like a slower version of Magwick, what we're trying to do is take this second apex using the first one as a deceleration zone. And in order to take enough speed, we really need to slow the car down with steering lock rather than the brakes. Clearing the brakes and scrubbing the front tire across the road a little bit to bring us to the correct speed for this second apex. This takes a little bit of practice and belief, but you're only ever really braking for this second apex from the initial point where you press the brake pedal. It has a secondary point of building temperature in the left front tire, which means that eventually the balance will switch again, just like it does in the middle of Magwick, to give you a bit less understeer through the final part and move towards oversteer, which you'll have to control. When that happens, it's very important to stay away from the exit curb, which is really nasty and will ruin your entry into the chicane. Correct technique for the chicane puts us right over here on the left hand side, braking in general earlier than the driver is tempted to do. Then it's a much squarer line than often drivers think with most of the work being done in the first part of the chicane, not driving directly to that second wall. Then all of that effort in the early part of the chicane can be converted into speed as you get the throttle on through the exit and get your gear shifts right to the line. I hope you enjoyed that track guide of Goodwood. Let's check out a lap at full speed to see it all play out.